New product introductions brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. This week is Tran Lady Ada. What is a new product introduction NPI this week? Well, I'm excited to have a new vendor on INAPI. I always love, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the STs and the TIs and the analog devices, but uh, once in a while you get something new. Try it's semiconductor. Um, so this was featured on digikey.com slash new. This is the TS4631. Make sure I get the part number right because I have a couple in the family. And this is an infrared light uh, analog front end specifically for VR and AR uses. So this company, this is from their um, website for Triad. They're kind of like the specialty ASIC maker that makes uh, the chips that are used for tracking devices in AR and VR, but also might be useful for other kinds of 3D tracking, which we'll talk about. So even if you're not like making an AR or VR product, but especially if you are, uh, this product might be interesting to you. So the uh, TS4631 is the latest in generation of their light to digital converter. And basically, you know, at the bottom right, you see um, how you connect it up. It's kind of the usage diagram. You have this chip, uh, you give it a couple little passives, you give it a big IR uh, photo diode, and then it can send the envelope and data from infrared um, lighthouse transmitters to a microcontroller, ideally one that has uh, you know wireless connectivity like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or Zigbee, um, that can then be used to track the item with millimeter precision in a 3D space like a room. This chip is used primarily in the HTC Vive or Vive. Man, I don't know how to say it. I'm going to say Vive, but I could be wrong. Um, the VR system. Uh, that you can even see like there's these little divots in um, all of these little products and that's where the infrared receivers would be and then the two things in the top right and top left those little square roundish boxes those are what are called lighthouses and they look and it's a beautiful creative commons i thought public domain photo of a lighthouse they work just like a lighthouse works where uh inside is um those boxes are these really bright infrared light so you don't see them with human eyes but sensors can see them and um this is from the presentation from alan yates who who i guess worked on developing those base stations this is actually not what it looked like in the end this is, i think a prototype but basically there's like these really bright infrared ir lights and then there's x and y scanning motors which you can see like in that photo and the the, the lights are on the top uh and the left and the bottom and the right are the scanning motors and the scanning motors um, rotate consistently at I think like 30 hertz and flash the infrared light around the room as a line. Um, so basically scanning the room. And so what you would do is, you know, you connect the photodiode to this chip. Um, and it, you know, at first it flashes a, um, the lighthouse flashes, a, you know, a big sync pulse to get everything to be like okay you know i'm about to send you this h this x and y scanning um pulse and then the sensor looks for the x and y scanning pulse and measures how much time it took from the sync pulse to the x and y pulse to get to it and then you know this is from um the, a homebrew interface for these lighthouses from travel hudson using um some math and you can see like you know these envelope pulses on the on the bottom there you can see uh he's got four boards with um the earlier version of this triad chip i think this he's got the ts4231 and you see the little photo diodes the big silver things in the center there you get the pulse and envelope data and you can see it being graphed out and you know you do a bunch of matrix math which is documented here in, in a couple of other libraries if you don't want to figure out the math yourself and then you can get within like a couple millimeter precision xy coordinates using only two lighthouses although you can have up to four um, and then you have a base station that you can communicate to and say i know where i am in xyz space a lot cheaper than you would do with ultra wideband um, because infrared light is going to be a lot cheaper than having you know four radio transmitters that are trying to do time of flight um, and you can do time of pulse distance a lot easier than time of flight as well. Um, and this chip is actually, this is a, this is the latest generation, the 4631 builds on the 4231. I saw this uh, person who did some teardowns on social media of various controllers for uh, Steam VR. Um, and this is like, you know, as of like 2023, this is what everyone's using. 
this new generation is a lot lower power, has like good deep sleep modes. But you can see it's like a very small chip, very easy to use. And then you, you can see the um, photodiode is much larger than the chip itself and even all the passives. Um, and this is a, you know, you know, basically, I think chip code compatible, but a smaller die and um, lower power usage. Um, so this is how it works. And, you know, I think even Trammell Hudson in his write up, which I linked to in the text for um, this uh, video in this post, he kind of shows like you could build this all with analog electronics, um, but it would just really suck because you have to do like gain management and offsets and, uh, you know, de detecting the envelope, detecting the data coming out. Um, so it's nice about the TS4631 uh, is even if you have a powerful M33 microcontroller or whatever, you still want to have all of the analog stuff handled on this chip and d done very small and very inexpensively. Um, and it's a 0.4 millimeter BGA nine pin, but thankfully the middle pin is ground, which is shared with another analog ground. Thank you. Love that because it means you can do this on two layer board without any like buried or blind vias. Um, even though it's 0.4 millimeter pitch, you know, that, that is not the issue. It's usually, um, getting that middle pin out, but they made it really easy, um, to integrate. Um, and then the two output pins that give you the envelope and the data are also used for the configuration. So it uses I squared C there's like one 16 bit register that you can write to. And this is, you know, the sleep modes, the game modes, various thresholds you can configure, um, or you can use the defaults. Uh, you do need to configure it to start like it won't just like boot immediately into usage because uh, it starts up in sleep mode um like normal sleep behavior you have to tell it to be enabled uh so mode one or mode two so you know you do have to use the i squared c uh even if you're not planning to use any of the other um register bits <coughs> as i mentioned this is an upgrade to the 4231 i saw uh, triad semi has a github repo and they do have a library um, from a while ago for the 4231, the original version of this chip, uh, you can probably use it as the basis for your library on the 4260, 4631. I also saw there's a lot of people doing cool DIY VR hacking with this chip. And so, um, you know, I'm sure if you want to make an official product that uses the, uh, VR headset technology, um, you can, uh, uh, you know, talk to, uh, try out, or you can talk to Steam VR, you can talk to um, uh, HTC and, and you know, sign developer agreement with them. But if you also want to do, do your own thing, DIY something with um, AR or VR without necessarily going through the development process, you can buy these chips and, you know, the stuff isn't under NDA, it's fully publicly uh, documented. Um, you can follow along with some of these projects and guys, including this really cool white paper um, that basically shows how to make like a full 3D positioning system. There's also from CN Lorne, uh, he wrote uh, Lib Survive, which is um, a Python library runs on desktop that will do all the 3D calculations for you to create your own trackable objects without, again, having to uh, purchase a tracker. You can make small ones that use your own technology stack and your own sensors. So I think really neat. So check it out. It's in stock. Um, don't forget you need that photo diode, uh, but very cool. Um, you know, I think it could be useful for drones, could be used for interactive art, could be used for like any internal, um, tracking where, you know, the cost of the trackable device is, you know, can be made for under $5 built material. All right. And that's this week's on MPI. Hi, on MPI.